Hello everybody, my name is Michael, and in today's video what we're going to be doing is this right here. So if that looks exciting to you guys, please carry on and watch the video. Oh, and just one more thing before we go. Please consider like, commenting, and subscribing if you enjoy the video. But now with all that out of the way, let's carry on with the video. Okay, so starting off with Tormont here, all I've done is I've given him a Xenothal Prime, which is spray painting him black and then giving him a quick dusting over with white so we can really see those shadows. And then what we're going to do, starting off our first colour, and that is going to be Neutral Flesh, because we're going to be starting off with his skin here. So Neutral Flesh, a good, nice, neutral skin tone, of course. And we want to be using it everywhere where our skin is uh, available on Tormund, which is only in a couple spots. It's just his face and his hands here, so nice and easy with this step. And of course we want to make sure we get this on nice and smooth. And I've just thinned my paints down a little bit too, so you can take uh, advantage of uh, seeing where those highlights are as well, and keeping that in mind when we come to the highlighting steps. Then once we have that complete, what we're going to do now is coming on some highlight, and highlight skin is what we're going to be using, which is lovely named uh, paint for this and you can see it's much brighter and we're going to be using it for the highlight so for highlighting skin like this what we want to be doing is focusing areas like the uh, bridge of the nose the eyebrows the top of the forehead sort of those areas that naturally uh, sort of stick out on the model this model's got some nice definition so it's nice and easy to pick those out with a fine tip on your brush and of course it's to give that sort of realist realism from a distance of light hitting off uh, from those high points then once we have that complete, what we're going to do now is going to come in with a wash. And we're going to be using Reichlin Flesh Shade for this. And this is a cool, a nice, uh, uh, good, even overall wash is what we want to be going for here. Trying to avoid the pooling, especially on the face. We want to keep the only areas we want to have pooling where it's not going to matter too much is sort of just under in the eye socket so we can darken those down. But the rest of it, we want to make sure as it's drying that we work up anything to try and avoid any pooling in unnecessary areas. Then once we have that complete, what we're going to be doing now is coming in with some fur brown. And we're going to be using this for the uh, first colour for Tormont, and this is going to be his uh, shirt that he's wearing. So giving this a nice, good overall coat. And I want to start with this too, since his arm is crossed over and it's going to be a little bit harder to get to, especially when we have paint on and other areas. So going for the harder areas sort of first to try and mitigate accidentally spilling any paint where we don't want it to be and just save us extra steps along the way so that's why we're starting with the chest here and giving it a good overall coat with the fur brown okay then once we've done that what we're doing now is coming in with oak brown a nice dark brown and we're going to be using this as the base coat for the uh bear fur that uh torment is wearing here so just a good overall coat is what i'm getting to especially pay a little bit of attention while you're doing to this since it is a fur texture it can be very easily to accidentally sort of paint over and miss some of the deeper recesses it's not too worrying but you really want to make sure you spend the time and get a nice good overall coverage on these plots then once we have that bare fur picked out what we're doing now is coming on with some castle gray and we're going to be using this for the base color of the fur of his pants so good overall color coverage here again we want to be doing the same thing with the bare fur really making sure that we get into all those nooks and crannies especially on the uh, pants here it's a lot of areas that it where it's overlapping and stuff so making sure that you spend a little bit of time and really get into those uh, recesses in there and give it a good overall coat and uh, don't be afraid to uh, use two or three coats if you need to to get it really coverage i know sometimes i accidentally miss a few spots so just spend that little bit of time and really get into all those fur details then once we have that complete, what we're doing now is coming in with some desert yellow. This is an unusual colour here, but I want to go with something a little bit different from just ordinary browns and that, just to give it a little bit more vibrancy to the piece as well here. I'm going to be using it on the boots, but with a wash and everything, it's going to darken it down so it won't be so distracting to the eye when we're looking at the miniature from a distance. Then once we have those boots picked out, what we're going to be doing is coming in with some khaki now. And we're going to be using this for the uh, pouch that he has on him, as well as that he also has a belt on him of uh, sort of really loose leather. So we're going to be painting those up as well in the khaki colour. It's going to really help uh, punch out the colour since we've got uh, a grey and a brown there as well. And the khaki is quite bright, so it's really going to uh, separate the definition between those two colours on the model as well. Then once we have that belt picked out, what we're doing now is coming in with some dark stone, which is a nice deep uh, grayish brown color. I'm going to be using this for the hilt of the uh, the scabbard of the sword, sorry. And we want to be just giving this a nice good overall coverage, making sure that we don't accidentally get it onto those areas where we don't want it to. And it's going to be a nice uh, dark 
uh, brownish color that's going to separate itself out from the a lot of browns and grays that we're using here already then once we have that complete what we're going to do now is going to come on with some monster brown and we're going to be using this monster brown this is a nice light brown as a dry brush and we're going to be dry brushing it over our bare fur areas that we've got just giving it a nice quick uh, rough dry brushing to give it that sort of highlight effect like the sun's bouncing off and hitting it then once we have that complete what we're going to be doing now is we're going to come in with some matte black and we're just going to use this for one small area and that is going to be for the claws of the bear fur that we have on torment here so just picking those out nicely switch to a finer tip brush if you need to since they are quite um, small and pointy just to get them in there so we've got the nice uh, making it look like it's a real sort of bear fur that he's draped over himself then once we have those claws picked out, what we're doing now is we're coming in with some Agrax Earthshade. Now we're going to be applying this to everywhere we've painted, basically, except for our, our face, of course. We want to be applying this to all the areas we've painted on. So that's the boots, the the f everywhere that we've got fur, our uh, scabbard of our sword, just, just completely everywhere, giving it a nice, good overall coat. I'm going to go pretty heavy with this too, so I'm going to drop the colors down a lot, especially on those boots. I'm going to probably apply a double... Uh, coating of Agrax Earthshade on there just to dull them down just a little bit because I think they're a little too bright on the miniature. Then once our wash is complete what we're going to be doing now is coming in with some deck tan and what we're going to be doing for this is we're going to be using it for the cloak of torment here so giving it a nice overall uh, coating and especially since we've got that nice billowing effect too and we've got those nice uh, flows in the actual cloak of it sort of blowing in the wind there making sure that we give it a good overall coat and really get into those recesses as well giving it a nice overall layer and probably take uh, two layers here to get it nice and thick especially since i'm using deck tan here the paint's a little bit thinner and i've thinned it down so going for two coats to give it that nice overall look and giving it that good finish that we're after then once we have that complete what we're going to do now is coming in with some metal color and we're going to start off with some gun metal here and of course we're going to be using this for the uh, sword itself so just actually the main part of the sword the blade we've got here as well as that there's also some uh, little rivets down the um, scabbard of the sword so we're only picking those out as well giving them some nice uh, detail and a bit of an effect especially from a distance too then once we have that complete, what we're going to do now is going to come on with some Gree Gold. And we're going to be using this for uh, the handle of our sword here, the hilt. As well as that too, he also has some braces on him as well. So we're going to be painting that uh, as well with our gold, giving it that nice uh, shiny appearance since he is a nice accomplished warrior. And that he's probably earned some something nice and flashy for himself and i think armor is where he'd probably use that as well as that it's going to give us a nice color to bounce off with with all these uh browns and grays that we have on the miniature too so a nice eye-catching bit to the miniature then once we have that complete what we're going to be doing now is going to come in with some fire orange and some orange brown and we're going to be mixing them together roughly in a 50 50 mix and we're going to be using this for the hair of torment now i know uh, i've been following a lot of the sort of book representations for the uh miniatures that i've been painting here but i couldn't not do torment here from the show where he has a fiery red hair so i think that just looks a lot better to me than his uh gray hair that he seems to have in the books and especially on the artwork for this miniature but i wanted to go with that nice fiery red head with the actor that they used to play with it, it really helped make the miniature stand out then once we have that complete what we're going to be doing now is coming in with some known oil and we're going to be applying this to our areas that we didn't use our brown wash so that is our cloak and our metal work of course is where we want to be applying this known oil giving it a good overall coat and making sure that we get to all those uh, areas of recess especially in that cloak too this has got a lot of um, billowing effect so we want to make sure that the wash does get all down there and sort of goes a bit smooth and uh, gives a good overall coat of the wash so it doesn't pull too much in those areas we don't want it to then once that wash is completely dry what we're doing is we're going to come in with some dark sea gray and what we're going to do is we're going to use this as a dry brush and we're going to use it to dry brush the fur of uh torment's pants here giving it that nice effect like the sun is bouncing off and really giving it uh, full effect and adding depth to the fur that is on his pants there so just giving a good rough dry brushing overall in those areas where the sort of sunlight would naturally hit especially on like the knees and stuff there 
Then once we've done that, what we're going to be doing now is I'm coming back in with some Monster Brown and we'll be doing the exact same thing we did before, which is giving it a dry brush on top of the uh, bare fur there to make it like it's more bounced off in the light as well, giving that extra highlight. So we'll have those different tones of colour, especially that wash applied to, to bring those highlights back up. Then with that complete, what we're going to do now is we're going to come in with some Agrax Earthshade once again. And I'm just going to be using this to apply to uh, Torment's uh, facial hair and his hair there. I wasn't uh, sure whether I was going to go with the official art work uh, and follow along there or with the red head. I chose with the red head, so I'm going to use the uh, Agrax Earthshade here to give it a bit of brown into the tone. So uh, you can also do this step when you are doing the, the brown with all the resting applying that Agrax Earthshade. I just wasn't sure which colour I wanted to do his hair. So I decided on the red, so that's why I'm coming back in here with the Agrax Earthshade. Then once we have that complete, what I'm going to do now is coming in with some deck tan. And what we're going to do with this is uh, Torment on his uh, shirt that he's wearing here, he actually has it stitched together. So I'm going to be using the deck tan to just pick out those little bits of stitching there and uh, help add to the miniature a little bit. You can use whatever colour you want to hear. I, of course, had uh, deck tan on my palette. So I thought, ah, why not use it? And it's a different colour from the browns that we've been using here. So make it a little bit eye-catching as well. Then once we have that complete, what we're going to be doing is coming back in with our fiery orange and uh, orange-brown mixture. And then just coming in with a nice fine tip brush. I'll switch to a finer tip brush here and start picking out some areas for the highlights. And this is, of course, as you can see, I'm sort of uh, dragging my brush along, sort of trying to pick it out as like strands of the hair. It has nicely sculpted strands in the miniature as well, so I'm just sort of trying to pick those out as much as I can as well, but also giving it an area where the sun would bounce off and give it that highlight effect. So it's just a matter of going around and picking it out with a nice fine tip brush. Then once we have that complete, what we're going to be doing now is coming in with some ivory, and this is going to be another quick dry brush, and I'm just using it for the absolute highest points of our pants that we've got here so this is basically the knees and the very tips of the edge of the fur where it's going to be uh, catching that light so nice and easy here giving it a very fine high highlight and then with all that complete what we're going to be doing is coming back in with deck tan once more and we're going to be using it to highlight up his cloak of course and as you can see like i said before this cloak has some nice sculpted in detail of it billowing in the wind so it's got some nice natural high points of the mon miniature sorry carved into it so you can see there it'll be nice and easy to pick out with those colors that we want to highlight it with and we've got that deck tan in here and it's just making nice easy work of picking out those highlights and then with that complete we have finished up Tormon so you can base them like the rest of your army and we can move on to some glamour shots And with all that complete, we have finally finished painting up Tormund Giant's Bane from the Song of Ice and Fire miniatures game. So I hope this video has been helpful for you guys. Whether you want to follow along with what I did here, or you just want to use this video as some inspiration and in painting up your own miniatures. But with all that said guys, I'd like to say thank you all for watching, and I can't wait to see you all in the next video.